The most common question that I get is who's the best cloud? Let's take this episode to answer that question. So welcome back to the Cloud Computing Insider, where we look at the truth of cloud computing, what works and what doesn't. I'm your host, Dave Linthicum, author, speaker, B-List geek, and here to, to tell you about the realities of cloud computing. In this case, what's the best public cloud out there? How do we pick public clouds? What should you consider within your enterprise? First, this is a very sensitive topic. Uh, I've been talking about public cloud providers for the last 15 years, and certainly the evolution has, uh, has grown a great deal. Lots of things have changed. It's an interesting topic, interesting subject matter. However, I do notice that people get really emotional about who's their favorite cloud provider. In many uh, occasions, I think it's it's for the right reasons. They uh, study that cloud provider, they have certifications in that cloud provider, they're very bought into what that cloud provider does. But ultimately, this is about picking the right technology for the right reasons, and cloud providers really kind of are no different. So the answer to the question in terms of who's the best cloud provider is going to come down to what do you need your cloud provider to do? And uh, while that uh, takes a few people back, I think it's something that we should look into. So let's talk about the categories of clouds. Uh, while we're going to talk about infrastructure as a service providers or IaaS, and those are typically clouds that provide services around things that you would normally find in a data center, storage, compute, platforms, things like that. Uh, AWS, Microsoft, and Google being the prime examples of that. There's other types of cloud providers out there as well. There's software as a service providers like salesforce.com and platform as a service providers uh, that offer you the ability to build, deploy, and, uh, and host software um, out on a platform as a service provider. Heroku is probably the, the best instance of that. Uh, so you would use them for different reasons. Obviously, platform as a service were to development, deployment, and building and hosting applications. Software as a service when you're trying to leverage an application over the open internet like salesforce.com or other accounting systems that people deliver uh, through a service. But primarily when people think about public cloud providers, they think about IaaS, infrastructure as a service provider, which is Amazon, Microsoft, Google, and a few others that we'll get into. So who are the cloud providers out there? And we're gonna look just at public cloud providers, not private cloud providers uh, in this episode. And AMG, Amazon, Microsoft, Google, are the ones that come to mind. And obviously those are the top three. And normally when enterprises are picking public cloud providers and infrastructure as a service public cloud providers, they're looking at, uh, at those particular vendors. But those aren't the only options out there. You certainly have other cloud providers to consider. Oracle has an infrastructure as a service based offering. So does IBM and so does Alibaba, primarily, primarily serving the Asia Pacific uh, RIM, and there's other providers out there as well. And so managed service providers, colo providers, there's regional clouds, there's uh, clouds that only uh, operate within a particular country called sovereign clouds. There's lots of options that we can use out there for public cloud provider options. And also we have things like micro clouds, and those are gonna be vertical cloud services, um, people, clouds that are uh, just providing services around the agricultural space or, or the retail space. Uh, and then some of those are out there, as well as some of the uh, micro clouds that we're seeing being built around the rise of generative AI. And so they're providing GPUs as a service, the specialized high performance computing systems you can use as a public cloud offering. And you can mix and match them with other major cloud brands like Amazon, Microsoft, and Google, but they're an option for people who are building and deploying generative AI systems that may find that the cost of actually building these systems on their own are gonna be a little prohibitive. So I know some of you are asking if there's not one cloud provider that I should look at, one that's the best uh, each and every time, how do I pick a public cloud provider? And it really kind of depends on what you're doing and what you need the cloud providers for. So your criteria for selecting a public cloud provider is going to be very much dependent on your own requirements as a business. Uh, I put together a spreadsheet that I use for training purposes. You can see that up on your screen now. Well, it just kind of guides, guides you through the basic uh, criteria, the basic process of picking a uh, public cloud provider, in this case, an infrastructure as a service public cloud provider. So we need to look at the relative importance to the business with certain types of services. And I just list a few up here, storage, provisioning, 
management governance, network services, compute, security. And obviously, your list is going to be dependent on what you're looking for that particular cloud provider. This is obviously an oversimplification for training purposes, but it really lists and gets into the criteria for selecting a cloud provider by forcing you to look at the particular services that you need to leverage as a requirement and also the relative importance of those services as they are to the business. And in this case, I make a force ranking, uh, which adds up to 100%, so I can figure out which ones are gonna be more important than other services. And then it's a matter of looking at the different cloud provider offerings out there. And I have cloud A, cloud B, cloud C, cloud D, cloud E, cloud F, uh, cloud G. Uh, but it can go into a number of providers. And you can certainly fill these in with AWS, Microsoft, and Google, and Oracle, and whatever cloud providers you're looking at. And then we can rank them based on what we know in evaluating their ability to meet the criteria. So in other words, their ability to provide storage. And if we may be looking at object-based storage, and we're looking at the capabilities in those for the particular cloud providers. Look at management, look at governance, look at networking services, things like that. And be able to provide uh, a ranking for those based on what you found and how you evaluated those public cloud providers. And that allows you to come up with a relative uh, uh, good in index score, which you see on the bottom, in terms of which ones are going to be in rank order from the best fit to the least fit. Uh, even that may not uh, just dictate your criteria. You may have to look at other systems as well, look at support, look at points of presence. Uh, lots of things, attributes come into picking a public cloud provider. So here we see what's important to us. And as you can see, storage provisioning uh, are the most important things for our criteria. Uh, this is just a spider graph that represents the uh, spreadsheet uh, that we were just looking at. So other things to look at would be how they apply to a particular cloud provider. In this case, Cloud A, this is the one I think that uh, was the uh, came up with the highest index score, uh, ranked well in storage, uh, well in provisioning, um, yeah, mediocre on management, uh, mediocre on governance. Network uh, was was a, a poor spot for them. Uh, compute was uh, mediocre and security also mediocre. However, the ability for this particular cloud provider, Cloud A, to support storage capabilities and provisioning capabilities meant that for our particular purposes, for this particular application, for this particular set of systems, that it was the cloud provider of choice, it's the one we picked. And so this is the case of selecting a single provider. Now, that's not always going to be the case, nor everything's going to be much more complex than that. So when you evaluate cloud providers on on your own criteria, you're going to find that it's not going to be a single provider each and every time. It, it's certainly a good luck if you're looking at a particular system and one provider like Amazon, Microsoft, or Google is able to fit the needs of, of the entire system. That's going to be simplified as well. But uh, we have to be able to pick the cloud that we're looking for and the number of clouds that we uh, need to that are going to support the best of breed capabilities of the system we're looking to build. So what I'm saying here, this is not about picking a single cloud provider. This is about picking a solution which may uh, encompass one cloud provider, two cloud providers, three cloud providers, five cloud providers, depending on your particular needs. So keep that in mind. This is getting into a very complex set of criteria to pick solutions that are going to be very complex unto themselves. And we have to do that because we're looking to leverage the cloud that's able to provide the best of breed services that's able to bring the most value back to the business. Always keep that in mind. That's extremely important. People have a tendency to miss that. They pick cloud providers for the wrong reasons, sometimes emotional uh, reasons. They're, uh, they, they understand they've been trained. People in the organization know how to leverage uh, that uh, particular cloud platform, but we have to expand and open our mind on all the other options that are out there. And picking infrastructure as a service providers are really kind of no different. And by the way, it's the same whether you're picking a software as a service provider, platform as a service provider, you're picking on-premise systems, you're picking private cloud platforms. That really kind of comes into play. We look at the requirements, we back the appropriate technology into those requirements. And that's the way you play the game to win. So in conclusion, that may have not been the answer everybody was looking for. They probably clicked in to see if there's one cloud provider that Linthicum can tell us that's going to be the one that we need to pick and one we need to use as our go-to cloud provider for everything. Those just don't exist. And if you do that, 
you're going to find you're going to be building and leveraging under optimized systems. So it's going to work. Uh, all the cloud providers are pretty good in their ability to provide object storage and the ability to provide compute and platform, platform services, all those sorts of things. However, there's going to be one permutation of solutions, one cloud provider, three, five, doesn't matter, and sets of services you're able to bring to bear on your problem that's going to provide you with the most optimized solution, which is going to bring the most value back to the business. And that's the way the game is won. Keep that in mind. So that's all I have for you. Don't forget to like, subscribe, um, click the alert button so you're notified every time a video drops. I'm going to try to get videos out every week. In fact, I've been getting videos out every week. Uh, the channel's been growing like crazy. We're uh, getting close to 10,000 subscribers after about 30 days. So make sure to tell your friends. People are interested in cloud computing and understanding the realities of the technology. Uh, this is a great place uh, to, uh, to come and get that information. Also, don't forget about my book, Insider's Guide to Cloud Computing. You can get that on Amazon or anywhere books are sold. Uh, also, my course is out on LinkedIn Learning, and I got lots of announcements coming up and different things I'm going to be doing and partners and courses and speaking events and all these sorts of things are going to happen happening in 2024. Uh, keep an eye on this channel, uh, subscribe to this channel, and I'll let you know about those when they uh, when I can post them. So anyway, you guys take good care. Thank you.